And let me shrink this down. And here's Seek It. All right. Ooh, look at this thing. This is crazy. All right. So we're off to the races. I'm not going to bore you with the, walking you through the fourth quad or all four quadrants um, for in too much detail. But look at what happens as theta goes from zero to pi halves. Remember, it's one over x. So as x goes to zero, which happens at zero comma one, I get asymptotic behavior. Cosine's negative in the second quadrant. Now look at what's going on here. Why? Let's see. Let's think about that. Why is this the absolute? Look at that. Why doesn't this thing go all the way back to zero? Well, we'll discuss that in just a sec. We'll talk about that. Notice that it appears as though the smallest on the positive y value that this can get is one, and the biggest on the negative y value is negative one. We're hemmed in. Well, if you think about that, that has to do with the reciprocal property through the third quadrant, one over x. Since we're in the fourth, or excuse me, the third quadrant, we know that x is negative. Then we hit our asymptote again when x is zero, and then on over through the fourth quadrant. Now we know that x is positive in the fourth quadrant, so of course, no secret's going to be positive. All right, let's talk about real quick why the smallest why this value is 1 and it can't get any smaller and this value is negative 1 and it can't get any bigger. So I'm basically walled out between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so I think it's easiest to show over here. Let's go here. All right, so we know that f of theta equals secant theta, which is we know we get from 1 over x. Well, a reciprocal, let's think about what a reciprocal is. I know that all of my x values on the unit circle are between negative 1 and 1, right? So if all of my x values come from the set from negative 1 to 1, then that implies that 1 over x is going to come from the set. If I grab 1 over 0, I get infinity. If I grab a number where x is less than 1, the reciprocal is going to be greater than 1. For example, 1 half. If x equals 1 half, then 1 over x is 2. If x is negative 0.1, then 1 over x is negative 10. The 0.1 is a tenth, right? So basically when I reciprocate numbers between negative 1 and 1, I get numbers outside of that range because of that special property of taking 1 over a fraction that's less than 1 and getting a value that's greater than 1. Okay, so I know that 1 over x, excuse me, is going to pick up all my values. I'm going to go ahead and erase this, kind of stay out of my way. I know that 1 over x is going to give me all of my values from, sorry about that, a little crazy, from negative infinity, from negative infinity to negative 1 inclusive, because 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1 union with 1 to infinity. And guess what that is? This also happens to be the range of secant theta. Okay, before we get too far ahead of ourselves with domain and range, let's take a quick look at this graph. All right, here's theta. Here's f of theta. And then we know when theta is 0, I'm pulling off the point 1 comma 0. So hopefully you remember from the little graph, this is 0 comma 1. Now, <laughs> look at that. I have this point 1 comma 0 over here, and I have 0, 1 over here. Remember, this point 1 comma 0 is on my unit circle. This point corresponds to when theta equals 0. So that becomes really important because we got thetas here, but we're pulling points off the unit circle. And the points that we're pulling off are 1 over x. So not to freak out too much about that. I know every time that x is equal to 0, which on the unit circle is at pi halves, and then again at, th whoops, at 3 pi halves. This is 3 pi halves. So I know at pi, I'm going to have pi comma negative 1 because that's when the x value on the unit circle is negative 1. Excuse me. And then I'm going to have this bad boy out here. Ooh, terribly drawn. Sorry about that. At uh, 2 pi comma 1. However, we definitely want to realize that if I keep going out here a little further, what's going to happen is I'm going to get that 
I'm going to get this. This is going to be at negative pi halves. And out here at negative pi, uh, let's try to make this as good as possible. At negative pi, I'm going to get negative 1 as well because I'm just picking up those points on the unit circle. And then I'm going to get that repetition. Let's see, at negative 3 pi halves. I don't know why I'm putting it up here. Negative 3 pi halves and then over here at um, 5 pi halves. So notice, every starting at pi halves, and if I add pi, I end up with another asymptote, which makes sense on the unit circle. If you have an asymptote for, for secant theta, if you add pi to it, you're going to get another asymptote because that's when x is 0 again. Every time that x is 0, you end up with an asymptote for secant. All right. Now let's talk about domain and range again. Now, look at that. We already, let's change colors real quick just so we can sort of highlight this. Sorry about that. Okay. Notice, we already discussed the fact that 1 over x, which is secant theta, is defined for these values. Well, remember, range is just the set of y values, which in this case, y equals secant theta. So I've got my range for free over here. It's negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to, <clears throat> excuse me, to infinity. Domain's a little trickier, but hopefully at this point, if you've already seen the sine and cos and tan um, videos, then you'll know how to do the fancy little, um, well, I'm going to define the domain by where it can't be rather than where it can be. All right, so it's going to be the set of all theta, such that theta is not allowed to be, theta cannot be, pi halves, plus pi k. And re remember, again, that k in this case is just an element of the integers. If I take pi halves and I add pi or 2 pi or 17 pi or 93 pi or who cares, I'm going to end up with another asymptote. If I take pi halves and I subtract pi from it, that's like this negative pi halves, this negative 3 pi halves. If I subtract 2 pi from it, then I end up with another asymptote. So I have this, this repetition. Now this is going to become really important down the road, but notice that this graph from here to here, that's not a repetition. That's not a repetition. So this is really the mother graph that you need to think about. All right? That's the mo look at that. I can see everything that happens because after that, I start, whoops, after that I start repeating myself to the left of theta equals zero, I start repeating myself. So, or excuse me, theta equals negative pi halves, I start repeating myself. So you want to be able to see these two little pieces and say, okay, that's one period of secant theta. All right, really quickly, because you guys are probably, I'm probably starting to get a little bored with listening to me talk. I'm going to jump over a page here, and we're going to do f of theta equals cosecant theta. And I'm just going to blast through this f of theta equals cosecant theta, which we know we get that from 1 over y on the unit circle. All right, now let's go ahead and kick over here. I'm going to shut this down, <clears throat> excuse me, and let's go to cosecant theta, which is right there. All right, now look at this one. I'm starting here. Let's get this on this side. So it's 0. Remember, 1 over y, so whenever y is 1, Whenever, excuse me, whenever y is 0, I have myself an asymptote. Well, clearly at the point 1, 0, y is 0. So I start with an asymptote this time through the first quadrant until I'm at 0, 1, at which point 1 over 1 is 1. And then through the second quadrant, all students take calculus. Sign is positive in the second quadrant. And then, ah, oh, crud, as I get over here to negative 1, 0, well, guess what? Y is 0 again. I got an asymptote. And then in the third quadrant, I know that excuse me, I know that tangent and cotangent are positive, so clearly cosecant is going to be negative. And then again in the fourth quadrant, since y is negative, cosecant is going to be negative as well. And there we go. And now, the beautiful thing about this is it's framed in really nicely. See how cosine from 0 to 2 pi, or excuse me, secant from 0 to 2 pi? We don't get the feeling on this applet that this thing continues, that this flops around. However, 
on cosecant, I get these beautiful little U-shaped humps. All right, so if I go back to my bamboo paper, I don't actually need this guy to be very big. What I get is, so I know here at pi, because that's when y is 0, and at 2 pi, and then let's go ahead and go over here to negative, whoa, I lost my uh, negative pi. I guess we'll just have to deal with that. And negative 2 pi, and I know that it goes, this is 0. Here's theta, and this is f of theta. I know that I go through the point pi halves, comma 1, and whoop, like that. And then over here at 3 pi halves, comma negative 1, and like that. Badly drawn, sorry guys. And then over here at negative pi halves, comma negative 1, and I'm going to get this. And then at negative 3 pi halves, negative 3 pi has comma 1. And I get that guy. And all of these points, remember, this thing repeats itself every 2 pi. It's got that same periodicity or the same period as, as the other ones in terms of it repeats itself, um, every, in terms of sign, excuse me. It's going to repeat itself every 2 pi. Now let's do the domain and the range real quick, and then we will call this done. So here's my domain and my range. Let's do the range. Range appears to be the same sort of behavior that we got out of secant. Notice that I, if I take 1 over, I take the reciprocal of numbers from negative 1 to 1, then I'm going to get numbers larger than 1 and numbers smaller than negative 1 with the notable of with the notable exception of negative 1 and 1 because 1 over 1 is 1 and 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So my range is going to be from negative infinity to negative, negative 1 inclusive union 1 to infinity. All right? And then my domain, now all I got to do is look at where my trouble is. My trouble appears to be happening every pi. So, and the reason is, is whenever y is 0, I get an asymptote, and that happens at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, et cetera, et cetera, and negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, et cetera, et cetera. So the domain is the set of all theta, such that theta is not allowed to be. Um, let's, I'm going to go ahead and put 0 plus pi k on this one. And again, k is an element of the integers. All right? Again, Play with the applet. Get your brain wrapped around this. Memorize your mother graphs of sine, cos, tan, secant, cosecant, and cotan with their associated domains and range, and you will make your lives a lot simpler. If you choose not to memorize these, if you can't visualize these functions, I promise you, you will suffer at your own hands. All right, enjoy, and have a good day.